already more than half empty. This tank here is empty, the one in the yard is empty. That tank over there is three quarter full and this one is half empty. The tank on the other farm is completely empty, right to the bottom. So we haven't got that much slurry left. So by the time we get all our second cut slurried, we'll have no slurry left. We'll have pretty much all of it used. Now don't worry when you get into August tomorrow, it'll be nice to have the tanks empty because the raisin brown has got enough of slurry now. We want to just get it back on the silage ground because hopefully we get another cut of that silage ground. only one pipe connected to the slurry tanker. You could take the slurry tanker off and on in a few minutes. And now, well, it's a jigsaw of pipes. Thankfully, the wee bit of markings work well. So yellow, here you can see yellow, blue, and red on the far side. So you can see these pipes the way they're marked. Two markings means bottom pipe, one means top. You can see here, the same with the yellow too. One on the top, and that just helps me to kind of guess where this stuff's supposed to go. But that's it all hooked on. Pipe is in our tank, we're ready to go slurry. It's day number two here and we're in our big hill now on our second load. And one thing I do want to do is want to sort out, I think it's this one here that's blocked. You can see that gap there, that's one, two, three. It's the fourth one in. You can see the way we have a bigger gap there. So we have one blocked. Our stone trap probably needs to be emptied as well. I emptied it yesterday evening and I put out about eight, nine loads since I emptied it. So could do it emptying it now. So we might as well do all when we're at it. So in here. We have a macerator that chops up the slurry, sends it down the pipes. Okay, there we go. All right, nice, a couple of things in here. That's that. An electrical fitting. A grommet, yeah. This is the one here that's blocked, so we need to look at this pipe. Follow this pipe in here and see where that one is. And there's there, just right beside us. So of course the macerator tooth, what's that there? Piece of steel, that's good. All right, so just a good job I opened this. There is a big mole of wire. Yeah, how the hell did them things get into the tank? Anyway, nothing looks broken, um, but our macerator wheel is sitting right above the hole for this pipe here, the one we want to get looking at. The rest of them look all clear. So I'm just gonna to have to spin it now, uncover this one. Covered. You still covered it. Still covered? You tell me when it's uncovered, will ya? Okay. Alright. Uh, no, go again. No, it's still covered. Yeah, that's fine. Open now. Yeah. That's the hole there, you can see the way it is blocked. This is a screwdriver you remember we took out of the macerator. It's still in the box of the tractor, so what was blocking it one day is going to save it another. It's just a piece of hair or something. That's all it is. Nothing really, not a, not a stone anyway. Let's get it back on. So, Nicole, although you're standing there with the camera, I'm going to get you to stand over there on, on one side because this is a habit of blowing out. I don't want you to cover yourself. Oh yeah, she's full. So that's that piece that came out. I'd love to know what it is. Is it a chain? That is just one big ball of wire. That's a horrible thing to be stuck on a macerator. What you're looking at here is just great. See, this is only eight tanks, so I'm gonna to have to empty this more often. Look on the ground there, you see the amount of stuff that's coming out. Tanks that we are just after finishing emptying would be one that's very susceptible to that. Just where you're scraping in. That is just from the 804 and the dust we put on our passes. that. Right, so that goes to show how much grit just spilled up on them stone traps. I've never opened it yet, but it hasn't been full. So I need to empty it much, much more often. The reason why it surprises me 
is because when we brought this tank in to get this machine put on when it was opened up there wasn't an ounce of grit in the bottom of this tank it was lovely and clean and that led me to believe that there was no grit in our tanks at home what happens probably was that the pressure and because we're working on hills here which we'd normally be going uphill when we're emptying the tank probably blew out all the grit and we never noticed it with this it doesn't blow out and it gets all caught down the bottom here on the stone trap which stops it from going through the macerator by the way that's the kind of idea of it the heavy stuff falls to the bottom so i'll level that pile out there across the field and we'll check it now more often probably every five or six tanks for now and see what way it's building up it's just one of those extra things you have to do with these but at least no harm is done all right so it's now almost seven o'clock in the evening on day number two and i can't say i've been slurrying for two straight days we've drawn water actually most of today having to draw water is frustrating but it has to be done because it was getting way too thick so just before milking i drew five load of water to it right here Hole. Yeah, we managed to get five load of water into it and that got the thing mixed. But we should be right now and I want to really get this finished tonight if I can um, because I have a lot of other work to do and if a fella coming tomorrow to move the compressor, the water tank is coming then on Tuesday which will be the 6th of August. Another reason why I want to get it done tonight is giving rain tomorrow. Two weathers I look at is the Carlo Weatherman and YO Weather. I find it fairly good so time to get this out. All right, so I'm traveling fairly hard here. This is hard as the tractor allow me because I don't want to put on very much. That's one of the downfalls of a dribble bar. And when you're working on hilly ground, you tend to put on too much, I find. But I'm trying just to get the tricky parts done here. This field, you can't just go back and forth on it. You just you have to twist and torque because the field kind of chamfers in every direction. So you kind of know where you go at the beginning where the tank's at its heaviest. Do that spot first and then know where you're going to finish up where your tank is almost empty where you can go up a steep part of a hill and do that with that so there's a bit of weighing up on it it's like anything you get used to your own fields after a while and you start to know a way to approach it these parts here once again it's the speed just dead it's just dead there now i'd have to cut it down there into 2d so that'd be just too slow putting on far too much so it was the spread plate I'd be able to knock off the motor or knock off the pump to get power back in the tractor and get it done if you kind of understand what I mean. I'm just heading up the crown of this hill now. I'm not putting out any slurry at the minute. We're not doing any harm. Once the tank isn't full, we can go up here nicely, but trust me, the camera might not show it, but this is steep. And you can see the view that we have. So I'm gonna come up here now and I'm gonna back down really fast to that and get the speed up doing that. Then I'm going to drive up again and do the same. Do it down like that there until I empty this tank out. But it's only a few acres and it doesn't make a big difference. But look down there on that field. You can see how up and down and everywhere. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but it's a tricky field to master. And that's one run done. It's as simple as that. Now we're just coming down in the area that I've done. So here, just beside me, is done. So many as a man has come into this field and tried to slurry it different ways. I found now, by coming in and doing the low end of the field first. I used to do the top end first, but by doing the low end, right up to them gates and start at the top and come down towards the double gates, if you get me. So you're sandwiching yourself, working your way into the middle. I find that works best. It's now just gone 10 o'clock and we're finished the last load that i put out i don't know if you can see that you can just barely see the lines compared to this stuff here and what i tend to do with that thing to avoid any problems when you go to use it again is always finish off with a watery water down load you see the way your door bar folds up and you see the kind of hoop that's left in your pipe well what happens is tick slurry will cake in them pipes will solid up and if you leave that thing sitting for a week or more or two weeks in warm dry weather and that sets inside the pipe then that's when you have trouble so just to come along and put a watery load out just flushes the whole system out and leaves it that then the next time you go to use it at least it's working but anyway i'm glad to get finished it's the tours tonight the bank holiday weekend coming up and i'm knackered looking forward to taking it a wee bit easier this weekend just to have a bit of a rest because it was full force ahead there to get things done and we got a hell of an amount done when the weather was good and it was great to get that stuff just off my shoulders and done.
So that's that all foam there now. Just let it sit for a couple of minutes. That'll eat into all the dirt and loosen it all and just wash straight off. That's just contactless car foam, car wash foam. Because my micro machine is manual, there are no electrics on it, which is great. It makes it very easy to do this. In a lot of other parlors, you can't do this. Now there is electrics here, you might say, but these are all 12 volt. They're all in waterproof cases. I still don't put the pressure washer directly on them, keep it off them, but everything here is turned off. And I do recommend if you ever power wash them, regardless what ratings are on a shed or what way it's wired, turn the power completely off. And if you can, leave it off for as long as you can, let it dry out. That's that job done. The jars come out really clean, as you can see there. Once you let it soak in that kind of foam for a while, and it doesn't matter what kind of foam you use. You can buy foam now, especially for making parlors. It's up to yourself, but car wash. It washes a car, it'll wash down a parlor. The floor comes up great as well. Now any kind of darkness that's in it, like on the walls here where you see the algae in the corners. What I'll do tonight is I'll open all the doors. I'll come in here with an ordinary watering can and I'll come in with a mix of hyperchlorite and really hot water and just go with the watering can back and forth leave it on the ground the following morning when you come out everything all that algae is gone it kills it stops it from coming back near as quick because if you don't do that it might look good now but in a week two weeks time that stuff will be coming back as bad if not worse because you power washed it you're actually seems to be your feeding it when you do that so when you kill it off seems to stay clean for longer right well that's the kind of jobs i do when it's raining outside and the rain is starting to ease now and um, we have to kind of keep it clean as well for part of our inspection our board b inspection too which we're going to get one now very shortly so at least this is done and ticked off the list i'm going to put a hot wash through this i always put a hot wash through it after doing work like that because stuff can get in and you don't want that detergent certainly don't want that detergent and um, get into milk contaminated milk so a hot wash just to Flush it all out, get it ready for making. I'll be making now and probably be visible to watch in a half an hour's time. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Something very cool coming on Sunday, something very big. That's all you get. See you then.